Hello and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 at Carmsden Farm. Right, so it's July and that means it's harvest season. We're at that perfect time of year when all the fields are now ready to harvest. So in this episode we're going to mainly focus on doing both the barley fields. I'll probably leave the canola for the next episode, but at least we're at that point when we could start harvesting. So what I've been doing is getting all the equipment ready and uh, cleaning it off because to be honest I probably should have cleaned it off before but um, it had all the dirt on from the last harvest and uh, decided just to give everything a fresh look for when we start doing the harvest. So what I'm going to be doing is running the Heston baler on the uh, John Deere. That's going to be obviously doing straw. I'm going to try and keep one field's worth of straw sell the other field um, and then obviously we don't have to worry about straw with canola. But uh, yeah, we're going to sell one field's worth and keep the other. We've got plenty of it anyway, but it's uh, probably a good idea to top up just in case we do need any more. I've also got the class here, the Axion, pulling the dually. That's going to be doing the carting. I've also fueled it up and uh, yeah, given it a nice uh, spray with the jet wash so everything's clean and ready. And uh, all I'm doing with this Ford slash New Holland is uh, just using it to cart the header, which also I've cleaned. So we're pretty much set. We just need to, I think I might need to still fuel up the uh, harvester, but let's just go and quickly have a, a look at that. No, I've done that, so I don't need to do that, that's good news. So, I think the best thing for us to do is pretty much get cracking. Now, I'm going to do, as I normally do with harvest, um, I'll probably do the headland um, just myself, so I've done a bit of it. Um, use course plate for the rest of it, and then I'm also going to be doing a motor drive to do the carting. Um, and I'm going to focus mainly on the bailing. Let me just get this into position. Now I do believe I need to put the PTO. Or is it already attached? It looks like it's attached, but then again, that looks like a PTO. There you go. It's just the second one. Let me just check that's done the other side. It should off. This will be the only second time I've used this. Yeah, that looks perfect. So if we just try and jump in now and just give it test there you go that's all good uh, so that's ready to go I'll, like I said I'll jump in I'll do the harvest just the headland the first headland and then I'll also set up a course uh, and I'll get the auto drive working as well so what I'm going to just quickly do is just move this out the way because I don't want it to get in the way of the carter now I don't know where he'll try and join back onto the route but there is a point here so I don't want him to obviously come in here do a loop but then I've parked something in the way. So that's set up. Uh, the carter can just sit there for a little bit. The baler we're not going to use for a bit. Obviously by the time we use the baler, we'll be well into the harvest and also the carting as well. But I do just want to quickly point out something. So in the last episode we were looking at the grass fields. They've not changed. They, Unfortunately, it looks like I'm not going to be, be able to probably hit August time. If I just quickly get grass up and show you the state you can see that field three is ready to harvest but it's not quite there it's like one off so what i'm looking at is probably september i think september is going to be the perfect time when all these five fields here are going to be ready now i've been thinking about how to do this with a, a baler now the baler that i've got currently the mikhail it only does the 3500 um and it's like a combi but it's not them bales are too small, to be honest, in my opinion, especially for when we're trying to sell them. Um, it just means that there's a lot of uh, uh, bales to try and handle and obviously take to the store or wherever we decide to do, if it's the biogas or wherever. Um, last time I took them to the shop, just the bale shop, and it was pretty good money in itself. It's a little bit different when it comes to uh, the biogas in FS22. If we just quickly go to our productions chain, we do own the Bible gas, but you do start off with that. There we go, got the mouse back. Uh, so if we take silage, you can see that there's so many cycles. So basically each month there's 24 cycles, and this here is a recipe for one cycle. So if I take, for example, 2,120,000 litres of uh, silage, it'll turn into 1,909 litres of energy and then also methane gas, that is. Plus we get this amount of um, digestate. Now, it's difficult to find out how much money that'll give you. As far as I know, I might be completely wrong here and someone else can point it out for me, but I can't see how much money 
this gives me. I don't know if that is actual money. If I don't think it is. I think that's like a unit of energy. Um, I don't think that's the amount of money you get. But if I go into this tab and then look for energy, I can't actually see it. Which, to me, shows that right now it's difficult for, for me to uh, pretty much figure out how much we're going to get and how profitable it is. I imagine it's going to be more money. Surely taking salaries to a biogas plant is going to be more money. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm probably going to take like a full trailer load to the biogas plant and then also take a full trailer load at the same time. This is going to be like December, January when the best time of salad is. I'm also going to take the same amount equivalent to a bale store just to see the comparison of how much money we get so we can get some kind of idea going forward if we should be selling salad at um, the biogas plant or if we should be taking it directly to um, a, a bale sell point. That's what I want to figure out. We can do 24 cycles in a month. That's not bad, but but sometimes you do take hundreds of thousands of litres of silage. You can take up to like 300,000 litres if you've got like a bunker full. Um, and it's going to take quite a bit of time to actually process through that. If this is what it means, so it's 24 cycles in a month. Um, if we just do the quick math on that. So that basically means every month I'm going to be able to process around 50,000 litres at this biogas plant. So, I mean, that's going to take quite some time. I mean, if you take 300,000 litres, that's going to take you six months. Six months to process that. Uh, that's half a year. So, like I said, if you're taking half, half, you know, like a full bunkers load, half a million, if you've been really busy, you're talking it's going to be processing for at least 12 months. Now, it might pay off in the long run, just like a lot of money, a lot more money than what you get just by selling the bales. Uh, and you don't just get it all in one go. You get it gradually over that period. But then you've also got to keep going because I imagine that this will have a maximum. So I'm going to have to keep going dropping it off, um, loading the bales in. So I think it might actually be a lot of work, but we just need to see a comparison. So if I take some bales and try and take the same amount as I would to a, uh, a sell point for the same, for, for silage bales, I can actually figure out how much money we're going to get. So the last thing I just want to quickly point out about that is I have decided to sell the baler then. So the Mikhail baler that we've got right now, we're going to sell. And what we're going to do is we're going to either get this one here, which is uh, the one that's actually a mod version of the original in uh, FS22 by Giant. But the good thing about this is you can have twine with it and also like net wrapping and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Probably would go with that, um, if any. Uh, but then I was also looking at, there's another one that stood out for me, which is this one. This is also a mod, but the problem is I can't um, get any twine or net wrapping, for example, on this. Uh, but I don't know if that's a big deal. It's one of them things... Do you want to add it into the game and be a little bit more re realistic? Probably, probably so. Uh, but, it, you know, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but I do like the look of this because we can obviously make up to 180 centimeter bales. Now, I think I can only wrap up to 150, but it's a lot bigger than the 125s. So I'll, what I've decided is to get one of these, sell the, the, the Mikhail, which we'll actually be able to do. We'll be able to get this brand new with the second hand Mikhail we sell without actually spending any extra money. And then what I've also decided to do is if we go to tools, I'm going to actually lease out a bale wrapper because I can't afford it. They are quite expensive, 54000 I honestly sometimes uh, look at the cost of the bale wrappers and it's, it's, it's really extreme. But I am, that's the route I'm going to take. I'm going to lease out this. Use Courseplay because that feature is amazing within Courseplay where it does the wrapping for you. And uh, then we can obviously get the bales in the field fermenting. We'll leave them there until we, we want to obviously go and sell them. That's the plan anyway. So I think that's a good plan overall. Right, so let's crack on with this. I have been talking for some time. I just want to make sure that I've got enabled straw swath. I have, that's good news. And then we're going to just go around this field and we're going to start harvesting. Now, I don't want to try and drop any of that. There we go. We're dropping it in the field, that's the main thing. Um, and let's get through this. Now, it's going to be interesting to see the comparison from this time round to the last. Uh, because when we started up on Carmsden, we had two fields of barley, if I remember. Or it was either one field of barley and one field of wheat, I think it was, actually. Uh, but the good thing about it is we had a, a point where I can look back on a video and see how much we got in yield-wise for barley and then how much money we ended up getting uh, when we sold that. Uh, but that field wasn't 100%. 
Now this one is very, very close to 100%. I think we've got patched at like 98 um, and patched at around 97. Now, didn't mulch. That's the only thing that's going to not bring me up to 100, but we did everything else. So these fields pretty much are as high as we can possibly go unless we mulch, which is not a massive difference, but it's going to be interesting to see how much we get in comparison. And also, the good thing about it this time is we have got that field there of canola. Now, we didn't have that field last time. It was just in a cultivated state and it just needed a bit of work doing. Uh, but obviously this time around, we've done that. So I'm expecting to get a much bigger payday from these three fields. And it's, uh, I am missing bits. That's something you don't want to do. Uh, but also, I can also already tell straight away that we are picking up a bit more straw as well. They look some, like some good sized swaths. So the bale is going to be really busy. Which is good news because we're also going to be selling the majority of them. Probably, depending on how many we get, um, I'll try and obviously keep the field that gives me the least, but then if it still gives me quite a bit, I might sell a few of them anyway. Just pick a number of bales and we'll store them away because we're only currently using straw for bedding and uh, a tiny bit in the feed mix TMR, but we don't need to give TMR just yet because the cows are actually pretty well off on the hay and they're far away still from breeding. So as you can see, the six months, um, nowhere near obviously breeding and also probably nowhere near the uh, point where we're going to get some milk. I think we're like six months away at least from anything like that. So we have got plenty of time for them to get through that hay. And if I just try and level this up on a bit of a straight, I can actually look back at it again. You can see that we're at 92,000 litres of hay, which is a shed tonne. 28,000 litres of straw and it's not really going down that much within a full day within the game which turns out to be a month look how quick this is filled up we're already at 88% and uh, where are we we're about let's say just a little bit over halfway I'd say I'm doing the first headland so that is uh, interesting it really is now it's probably going to make a big pile so I will try and stop Now, I am still going to aim to try and do a couple of headlands manually before I switch over to doing probably straight away I'll I'll do um, a bit of bailing after I've set up everything within the courses and then obviously it'll be time for a montage at some point I always do like doing a harvest montage because you can get so much action uh, within that clip and uh, yeah, I always think it looks pretty sweet at the end so we're probably going to be doing quite a few trips to the silo. Um, I have forgotten how much this holds as well. Um, I'm only using it pretty much at the moment for harvesting. But hopefully that can change a little bit soon when we start uh, doing some silage in a bunker. Which is a path that I do want to take at some point. Uh, even if we have the silage in the bunker just for the animals. And then maybe we can do the bales when we want to sell silage. So I will sit in this and just see how much this fills up, just to give me a good indication of uh, how I think it at least holds maybe three loads around that. But again, I have completely forgotten. Right, so it's definitely not three loads. It's going to be like just literally just under two. So that's how much I remember. Um, but at least we know we're going to be getting a good yield. Now, I really do want to know how much we got last time around. But forgetting... I have to look back at that video. But I'm sure we're definitely picking up a lot more here. We are. I think it must have been about 50%. I don't even think the, fer the field was fertilised at all. Um, and then obviously we've done rolling and all that kind of stuff. I think it was just the crop in the field. I think it might have been close to just the base yield without any extras. I can't guarantee that without obviously looking back at the state of that field when we started but I do remember that it was quite a way off which is a really positive sign because it's going to hopefully mean that all this hard work that we put into this field earlier on in the year is actually going to pay off really well right so I haven't even done one full headland I'm just shy of it and it's just filled up again so we're already going to be full in this trailer we're going to have to drop 20 odd thousand litres 
to the uh, silo, which is really good news. So I'm just going to empty this up. I'm going to do... I'm going to carry on after that. We'll drop this off, but what I'm going to do is set the course going after I've done the headland. I was going to do a couple of headlands, but I think it just makes sense now to at least let this uh, harvester crack on a bit more because it's obviously filling up quite quick and we need to empty this uh, trailer as soon as possible really so what I'll quickly do now is we'll set up the course um, now we're going to be using field 3 now I don't know if I've got any courses set up for field 3 I have got a harvest set up that's uh, let's just activate that Let's just. this must be the first time we did it so if we have a quick look, that's not too bad. It is starting on the headlands as well, and it's doing three. I do like that. That's a pretty spot-on course. So what we need to do is just... So if we just carry on from around about here... There we go. And what I will do in a minute is show up the... Uh, the waypoints and we'll just try and tell it to carry on so that should be fine there so let's bring up the course play menu there we go so we want first waypoint but what we do want to do quickly is go to this and just show all waypoints a second so we can actually get on the right path here. So we need to probably reverse back a little bit. So we did actually start pretty close to where I set that course up. Which is good news. And I think that'll be fine there. So if we just put nearest waypoint, job done. Uh, so we'll let that crack on and we'll just go and unload the trailer and then at some point we'll set up an auto drive to do the carting and we'll also set the harvester up as well within that so let's swing this around I think we've also got about 3,000 left in this silo from when we uh, didn't we didn't take it all we left it a little bit Yep. So we do need to keep this door open. Say what harvest when you're doing a harvest it always is a good feeling because you know eventually it's all gonna pay off. All that hard work. There we go. So let's tip this in. So we have got 3,983 litres of barley already in here and 3,471 litres of wheat. So this is obviously going to shoot up to around about 25,000. Happy days. So now I just want to actually bring up water drive because I can't remember if I had a weight point. I don't think I have in within the field. I think I did the carting last time and the bailing. I think I might have done both, you know. I don't think I used auto drive. So we do need to set up this. Which shouldn't be an issue at all. And we'll also do it for the second field as well. Now I think a good place here we we'll probably just be where we do the first headland. So if we just bring this up, um, we do need to move the baler as well at some point because it's going to use that path. Um, we're obviously on the right hand side here. So maybe what would be a good idea is to start it from about here. That should be fine. So let's start recording. Hopefully that won't get in the way. But 
Seeing that, it might do, but we'll find out. So, let's just save this one here as... Field 3, wait. There we go. And then we'll loop it back in, but we'll have to do a bit of a loop here. I mean, we could set that up better. We don't need it to be so far into the field, but I think for now it'll do the job. And then what I'll do is I'll set it back over here, and that should bring it out and that will be fine so connect that to that job done and then what we want to do is what I'm actually going to do is just check that it can do that loop so I'm going to start it from here and we're also going to put this to default field 3 weight we're also going to put this to unload combine which is that one and we need, we need it to go to the arable farm and then we need it to go to farm silo tip and that should be spot on so before I set that going I need to get back in the harvester which is waiting for us and this needs to be set to default Feel three weight. There we go. And if we go back over here and set that going, it should do its job. Fingers crossed. There might be some extras that I do need to sort out, some of the settings maybe, but we'll uh, worry about them in a second. I just want to first make sure that that is actually working. Right, so he's on his way. And I'm hoping he doesn't hit the tractor over there, but he is on his way, and that's the main thing. So let's just jump up in the, in the air, and we can get a better view. So he's, as you can see, he's pathfinded down around the edge of the field, which is nice to see. Um, saying that, he'll probably drive through the crop at some point. He usually do. But at least Corseplay sitting there patiently waiting to be unloaded. Now, I don't know if at some point Corseplay will just stop. I know it does on other jobs, so... Be surprised that if he does take his time, he might just stop and uh, think um, to save me a bit of money, maybe. Right, so here we go. Now, what I am going to just quickly do is sit in here and have a look at some of these auto drive settings because I want to make sure that unload fill level 90%, we'll put that to 99%, that's fine with me. Void fruit, yeah, if you can, not an issue. Park in the field, yes. I think that's probably spot on. Automatic refueling, no, we don't want that. There you go. I'm happy with that. That looks to be working a treat so far. So this episode has already gone on for quite some time. Um, Harvester usually are quite a big job. So what I'm going to do now is stick in a bit of a montage. I'll get quite a bit of the uh, the harvester in this field. I'll also get, do the carting as well. And uh, I'll try and get as much baling done as possible. If we end up just doing one field in this episode, I might do the uh, other barley field in between this episode and the next. And then in the next episode, we can focus on doing the canola. Um, and then we'll have all three fields harvested, hopefully, in two episodes, which is not too bad still. So... Enjoy the montage and I'll cut back in when it's all done.
Right, so welcome back. That is the field all done. And I have to say, let's just let that tip, but I have to say I am over the moon with the amount of barley we ended up getting. If you can see there's a lot of straw bales, a lot of straw bales, to, and uh, also there's a few bits that I'm probably going to go over and tidy up. There's a few bits of straw and tiny little bits on the corners that... Uh, has not been harvested but we're talking about like 99 percent of the field's been done and bailed up this guy's just about finish up this little bit i'll have to do this as well but like i said i'll finish up all the little bits properly but I, but look at how many bales we've got we've got a shed ton now i think the harvester's got around 500 liters left in it that's not tipped there we go nope Let's try that again. There we go. So this is tipping in. Let's have, have a look exactly how much yield we got. I honestly was over the moon with the amount we've got. 141,000 and we're still tipping in. So that's going to be over 150,000 just from that one field. And we've got another field of barley left to go. So we're definitely going to be over the 200,000 litre mark, which is, uh, which is really impressive. If we just have a quick look as well, we've done 70 bales, 70 straw bales. That's also going to bring in quite a lot of money. And I think what the best thing to do is just sell all the bales from this field because it is the bigger field and then we'll keep the majority from the next barley field. Because that's taken me so long, I'm probably going to leave the, the next field. Um, I'll, I'll do it in between this episode and the next and then in the next episode we will focus on the canola. I won't skip time. Hopefully we can get all three fields done within this month. Obviously it's going to take uh, quite some time. Um, and when I do jump to the next episode, I'll have done, like I said, the other barley field just to the right of me. Um, so it's probably going to be then, I'd say at least two o'clock, maybe a little bit later um, within the day. So we, you never know. Just like last time, we might be doing some nighttime baling and some nighttime harvesting. But overall, like I said, this has turned out to be an amazing yield and uh, you can't complain at all. So let's just start this up let's clear off this course now and uh, we can empty these bales this is why I got the auto load trailer because picking up 70 bales will be a nightmare if you were doing it manually it really would so that'll do there and the harvester itself is just need to put that back onto the trailer but I'll do that in a second We'll fold it up and we'll just park it up over here. It's definitely had a good session and I do need to put some more fuel in. We're nearly empty. And it's actually drank about 50% of the, the add blue as well. So we're going to have to probably put some of that in as well. All right, so let me just turn off flight mode. There we go. Job done. So let's just go over that one more time. 72 bales is what we produced. And if we go to this we can see that we've got 156,000 litres now of barley sitting in the cellar. We did have about 3,000 but talking over 150,000 for that field when it's maxed out like that is insane. Really is. And hopefully, like I said, after we sold the silage and the, all the canola and all the barley and all the straw that we're going to get as well, we should be sitting at a really good amount of money. I wouldn't like to guess what it is yet but I'm going to say it's definitely going to be pretty pretty impressive um, and should open up a lot of things that we can end up buying. I and mean, then we'll probably be able to get a baler, a newer spreader. Who knows? There'll be so many things um, that I'll probably want to buy when we get all this money. So I think on that note, with such a good harvest, I'm going to end the video there. Like I said, in the next episode, we'll be doing the canola. I'll make sure I finish off this field, uh, get it all cleaned up, and then also I'll do that field just over there with the barley, and I'll tell you exact amount of barley then we've got sitting in the silo, ready to sell at the winter time. But yeah, like I said, next episode, get, we'll get that canola done. That's going to bring in probably double the amount of money, but we'll obviously have a lot less yield. Uh, so we'll still probably pick up around the same uh, because it is quite a profitable crop. Um, it brings in a lot of in income, so it's not profitable, but it just brings in a higher, higher amount of income. But then we do get less yield. Uh, and then after all that, we're going to be doing the silage. And I think after we've done the silage and it's fermented, it's all going to be down to winter time when we take all this and sell it, which is going to bring in all that money. But like I said, on that note, I'm going to leave the video there. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, 
please give it a thumbs up because that really does help my channel out. And if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this one on Farming Simulator.